Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, Kathy. Uh, this is the uh, Tuesday, uh, September the 7th, the day after Labor Day. And uh, uh, as we've said, we, we take these a little bit ahead of time. So uh, it's not really Labor Day for us yet. Uh, <laughs> but uh, a couple things. One is, I don't know if you noticed here, but uh, have a new studio. Uh, yeah, the, I uh, love the look of it, too. Uh, it looks uh, this is This happens to be in my daughter's uh, house. Uh, and um, she has a super... Uh, internet speed. <laughs> so, oh, excellent. <laughs> uh, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to uh, 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 not have any technical difficulties, which we've had a few, uh, uh, but we set it all up and uh, it's really, really pretty. And then uh, uh, Michelle uh, actually is the one that leads my our business that I have with Jake Beckel. Right. Uh, and uh, so this gives us an opportunity when I come over uh, to also spend then some extra time with her talking business stuff. Oh, uh, so it works, it works out really well. Um, so it's, uh, it's fun for us to do. And so I'm enjoying this beautiful place. Um, and then, uh, we're heading up, uh, at over the, uh, w- next week and over Labor Day, uh, to the mountains, uh, Beaver Creek. That's what you said. Oh, Beaver Creek. I yeah. was wondering. Yeah. yeah. Going to nice. Beaver Creek and, uh, it'll be, uh, and Michelle's going with you Michelle, Michelle and her, and her dogs are going. So we'll oh, uh, fun. have some fun up there and, uh, it's a lot cooler. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so we're, we always enjoy the mountains So we'll go hiking and, uh, just be in the word. We're going to, we're, we're doing a study with Michelle on, uh, overcoming and deliverance, a study of David's life. Uh, so Excellent. we've uh, we started it here, and we're going to go up there and, and work on it. We do that every day, so uh, that'll be that'll be quite fun to do. And uh, what do you do? Anything particular for Labor Day? A uh, Labor Day, I think I shared on here. We will go up that weekend. Anna has a four day weekend, which is nice. Um, Caleb and Liv will come down, and we'll actually all go up to Dave Dunkel's for Woodsy. Oh, that's right, Woodsy Stock. Yeah. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Other yeah. than that, we'll probably spend a lot of time, honestly, kind of the last big weekend by the pool and yeah. enjoying that, and yeah, you know, nice. may go take the dogs hiking or something. But yeah, nice. It'll be a pretty pretty relaxed weekend. We did move Caleb um, back into the dorm this past weekend, so the house is notably more quiet. Um, but all, all good, good yeah. stuff going on. Yeah. And we did, um, uh, uh, now that we're at on the 7th, September the 7th, we, we did spend the last, uh, uh, four days, which would be last Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, mm-hmm. and then this following Monday, the 6th, uh, going through kind of a mini series, um, on the vaccine, yeah. uh, of, uh, what are, how do you approach it? How do you come to conclusions? Um, and then, um, how do you help others do the same thing? And actually, I've uh, interesting enough, Kathy, I've taught it uh, tw- two other times uh, to groups that specifically had uh, questions about mm-hmm. we have we have and these are these are like C12 people that are uh, leading others right? Uh, and said, yeah, there's a there's an issue coming up and have been coming up about mm-hmm. people taking positions and judgment and. Uh, right. you should and you better and, and on both sides of it. Uh, so, mm-hmm. uh, we went through all that with them again, you know, of, yes, of such what a it timely is. Conversation. Yeah, it really is. And, uh, you know, our broadcast is called come and see finding truth in the world of chaos. Uh, and if you, everybody can re can really relate to this, but mm-hmm. literally you can just look at, um, a news app and just see wow, look at that. That's chaos. Look at that. That's chaos. Look at that. Right. That's chaos. You know, and, and I'll just highlight a couple of simple ones. Um, uh, as you know, the Afghanistan, uh, issue, you know, is, is kind of a mess. Uh, there's people trapped mm-hmm. there. Uh, there's, uh, the, uh, terrorists are going to set up basically the country as their, as their mm-hmm. base, uh, which by the way, they also relate and they're right next door to Pakistan. So, um, we're going to see lots of complications from that 
what I call chaos because you have a known enemy mm-hmm. that is coming against the West and we're part of the West. So it, there's, we're right. going to be, we're going to be participants in that in some way. Um, and then, um, uh, they've basically, you know, again, uh, not related to, well, yeah, we'll give you more time. Yeah. We'll try to make sure safe passage. They're actually going the opposite and they're, they're killing people mm-hmm. who are Americans and, and known uh, people that assisted us in Afghanistan. Right. So, uh, it's chaotic. Um, right. and the result is going to be chaotic. And there's a lot, you know, we've, there's a lot of Christians still on the ground in there Afghanistan. There is, yeah. So we're going to pray um, for them and safety need to be and praying for, yes, uh, supernatural so. work there. Um, yes. And then um, uh, on the vaccine, which is interesting, um, the uh, uh, FDA just formally approved the Pfizer vaccine, mm-hmm. um, and uh, there's uh, because I'm in healthcare, um, I know, uh, and have dealt with pharmaceuticals is. Uh, it takes it generally takes seven years mm-hmm. to get a drug a vaccine approved and the reason is is that they go through uh, four phases animal trial uh, which is one to two years phase one which is just a few people uh, mm-hmm. one to two years and they do phase two more people uh, and then phase three which they do actually a lot of people around the world uh, right. to find out you know the side effects is it affected effective etc uh, and that takes, generally speaking, seven years plus. Mm-hmm. And the reason is that um, they have to find out the side effects. And if it works or if there's some long-term issue that they don't know going in, right. they get, it'll, it'll show up um, over a seven-year period. Uh, so the FDA basically um, didn't follow their protocol. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they skipped, they skipped the, human, or the uh, animal trial. And they just put uh, phases one, two, three, all into phase one, and they did a few people, and then said, "Okay, that's wow. that's that's good, and let's go." Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, and is it is it effective? Um, per se, it's 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 primarily effective, uh, right? So, At least in lessening the impact. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's not it's not a true vaccine uh, because a vaccine would prevent it, right? Uh, it doesn't prevent it. And because you're dealing with a virus, coronavirus specifically, mm-hmm. um, the virus mutates. Right. So that what they build something for, um, it might even be effective for that particular strain, but the virus mutates. Interesting enough, mm-hmm. um, the vaccine itself, itself is promoting the mutation. Because the uh, you know and you and this is this is a, a funny thing about viruses and uh, and these bacteria uh, is that they're <laughs> they're they're in a sense you know just think of it in a really simple way they're really really uh, clever mm-hmm. um, uh, and they're very responsive to their environment so when they right. get introduced into a a environment where they are going to be eliminated. Mm-hmm. They, it mutates. Right. Uh, Let me ask this, if you don't mind, yeah. because and this again shows my ignorance. So I apologize. But in previous things, you know, you look at polio or measles and mumps and that sort of thing. Were those viruses as well? Well, um, there are um, uh, they're very stable uh, viruses uh, as well as uh, bacteria conditions, and. Um, they don't. They didn't mutate, so that if you That's had a vac- if yeah. you had a vaccine for polio, mm-hmm. uh, well, it it eliminates polio. It it prevents you from getting polio. So when you take right. a vaccine, your conclusion, yeah, is well, I'm not getting. I am not now going to get polio. And for by the way, that yeah. that's exactly what happened. Uh, mm-hmm. So it didn't mutate, and then you you know you think about. You know, I, I was a kid, you were a kid, I got a polio vaccine. Right. Have and you ever didn't think twice about it? Have yeah. you ever had another one? No. Okay, why why think about why not? Because it never well, unless mu- they it, gave me a booster and I didn't notice. It it, it, it never <laughs> it know. it never mutated. It never mm-hmm. needed what was what what's what's polio, um uh and the virus of polio doesn't it didn't mutate because it's a very stable virus. Uh coronavirus happens to be 
a very unstable virus and it mutates and it does mutate they know it they mutate that because it is that similar to like because the flu shot every year if people get that is every year it's a little bit different and not necessarily effective or not you know yeah yeah because because um, of the mutations so is it a similar responding virus i i know i'm not saying it's the flu well, but is the, it a similar well the flu in the its flu response to vaccine cold, is colds, that what's going on colds and flus mm-hmm. uh are uh, created and happen by coronavirus. Okay. Uh, and by the way, interesting enough, you know, we've had coronavirus for, you know, uh, decades and decades and decades. Right. Uh, and you can go to your Clorox bottle. An old one before COVID-19, and it, it still says it, correct? Well, it says kills, yeah. kills coronavirus. Coronavirus, right. Um, and it's been on that bottle for 25 years. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, it kills coronavirus in the sense of uh, if you wipe something down mm-hmm. on your kitchen counter, for example, if there's any coronavirus that was there because somebody touched it, it, it would kill it. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it does. And, and it still does, by the way. Uh, so that even, corona, even COVID-19. So mm-hmm. uh, if it winds up on a surface, which is why, by the way, uh, you get on. A, you've been on an airplane. What do they give you? Yeah. Oh, they're giving you wipes to wipe things they down. Give but you they're a, also they, going through with the light wand to kill things. They they give you yeah. they give you a wipe, mm-hmm. and encourage you that when you go to your seat, mm-hmm. before you touch stuff, wipe it down with this wipe because right. it it will kill the COVID nineteen virus mm-hmm. if it happens to be there because somebody put it there by breathed on it or touched it. Right. Uh, so it's true. So uh, every year, because of coronavirus, colds and flus. Uh, mm-hmm. So <laughs> what do they do? They create a, a flu shot. Right. Uh, in essence, it's a, it's a mini vaccine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what it does is they, and because they have to uh, basically model the mutation, because remember, it takes months and months and months to create to to produce it. So, like for example, for this coming flu season, mm-hmm. they've already modeled what they think it's going to be, right. um, and they give you a shot and say, "Take the shot." Uh, two two effects. One is uh, it may help you prevent getting it a, a flu, mm-hmm. and if you get it, it'll lessen the impact of it. Right. Okay, now, um, and they basically say, we hope we guess right. Right. And it, yeah, maybe 50, 60% effective. Uh, And by the way, next year we got to do a different one. Okay. So the vaccine that we call a vaccine, it really is a a glorified flu shot. Okay. Um, It doesn't really prevent it, which is why a lot of people who have the vaccine are still getting COVID. Are getting breakthrough, right. Uh, Or or lessening or or transmit it so that if you look at the argument that's made, well, I have the vaccine Mm -hmm. um, and you should too. Okay. So, Mm -hmm. so uh, interesting argument about that is, okay, well, if you have the vaccine, why do you care? Right. (laughs) Uh, cause aren't you protected? Well, mm-hmm. uh, no, not really. And then people that, um, are around people that have the vaccine, we can say, oh, we're clear. And they say, well, not really. You mm-hmm. might not have the, the, uh, impact of it, but you could be a transmitter. Mm-hmm. Um, so guess what? That's why the, that's why the government, by the way, is processing thinking right now today. And this will be chaotic. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got to go back to wearing masks. And by the way, right. they may go to the next level. And this, this just happened. Um, Kamala Harris came out. Uh, and this is the things that, that I pay attention to of, huh, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, she makes a speech over in, in uh, China, in uh, Singapore. Right. Uh, and says, uh, by the way, uh, if you're going to do Christmas shopping, you better do it now. Well, this is mm-hmm. August. Okay, well, huh. Right. Uh, okay, huh. Do your Christmas shopping now. Why would she say that? 
because we're going to lock things down again. We're going to put yeah. the, we're going to put quarantine and and well, again. There's also, talk of China closing some ports to disrupt the supply chain. Yeah, well, they they uh, they are actually actually reacting to the mm -hmm. uh, workers that are getting COVID. Right. That uh oh, well, we better shut that down and not not mm -hmm. proceed. And, then, and of course, they're disrupting the supply chain with it as well. And on top of that, um, that there's ships. There's like a hundred ships ready mm -hmm. to unload in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And Los Angeles doesn't have the employees to unload them, right. so they're right. they're just backed up. Um, and sh uh, shipping containers are in a shortage. I mean, there's mm -hmm. there's it's all kind of, and, and the impact of what we're trying to say is that um, uh, there's chaos. <laughs> yes, uh, and it's going to get tricky mm -hmm. whether you take the vaccine or don't. Uh, and by the way, because it's not, we said it's not universal. There's no, there's no uh, logos that said it's absolute. Uh, God's answer can be different for different people. Uh, right. And so as we process this, uh, what we're trying to uh, try to alert people to is, and here's what I think about what's going on. Um, it's not about the vaccine. Uh, it's, not mm -hmm. about, it's not about the uh, mask. It's not about things. It's uh, as God is, is doing with us is let me train you. Mm -hmm. in how to follow my will right. because things are going to get tricky and the impact of the chaotic world is going to is going to impinge on things you can or can't do things you enjoy doing or can't enjoy doing uh, maybe supply chain issues uh, mm -hmm. even things like a, for example uh, and this is a little bit scary uh, in France uh, they've so they've so locked it down relative to the vaccine is if you go into a grocery store mm -hmm. and they say, do you have the vaccine passport? No, they literally <laughs> have bouncers really at this at this at the entrance oh. and they they throw them out. They have videos of throwing these the little old ladies out, like just tossing them out because oh. they said, no, I got to I got to get food. No, you can't. And. And so they're making it uh, to the point where you got to get the vaccine in order to have the economic mm -hmm. benefit of it. Um, and this is what we talked about before is, by the way, on either side of it is mm -hmm. uh, if God says the vaccine, you know, you're, we're going to find out there's consequences health wise to that. Mm -hmm. Well, God said, well, I'm, I'm going to use it for you. It's going to protect you mm -hmm. and, I, and I'll keep you healthy. For those that don't take the vaccine, I'm going to keep you healthy. Uh, and by the way, there's going to be economic consequence, so you better learn how to follow me. So what I believe is happening is it's critical, mm -hmm. uh, really, for, for this series that we're doing, for people to really grab hold of this and say, I got to learn yes. uh, what it means to hear God's voice and to walk with him because he, he will give me his will, mm -hmm. which is still interesting enough what I, uh, what I try to help everybody understand it's covenant. I'm still going to bless you to make you a blessing. I'm going to, I'm still giving you best and none better. Mm -hmm. This isn't going to second rate because the world's getting tougher. Right. Uh, well, because that doesn't bother him at all. Um, uh, I can overcome that. I can guide you. And it's not about, this is what's cool. We tend to think, what do I do? What do I do? How am I going to handle this? Mm -hmm. And what I've learned is I go the opposite direction. Well, God, this is interesting. Uh, how are you going to do this one? Right. Uh, how are you going to fulfill this, knowing that you're going to you're going to do things that I can't do, and mm -hmm. and this is what His will is all about. So, and that's uh, learning to be listening to Him and to be powered by the Holy Spirit. Yes. And I, you know, I heard somebody say just the other day, and I love this this picture that the Holy Spirit is the now of God. Yes. You know, and I I love that picture that that is our gift to speak directly into the now as to what we're facing yeah. and, and what we're doing. Yeah, he is the yeah. now of God. Yeah, and and, and that we uh, we we have that mentality when you say the now. That's our mentality. Is how about now? Yes. Okay. Now what? Now that I've come here, mm -hmm. uh, let's say God said, "Don't take the vaccine." Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then there's a consequence to that. Right. Uh, what you don't do is say, "Oh." oh I guess I made a mistake. Um, uh, this this uh, consequence looks tough for me. I'd better go back. I guess right. I guess I'll just take the vaccine because I don't want the consequence. 
-hmm. and see God's what you just said is no go the other direction okay now that I'm here Keep asking and you questions. and you told me yeah. not to take the vaccine which by the way is why you got to get it settled right uh, it's got to be absolute I heard God's voice specifically say yes take the vaccine no don't take the vaccine uh, or do this or don't do that because then you go the next step mm -hmm. and you say okay now what right now what right uh, what about now what about now and God says let me let me guide you and we have we have uh, you know Daniel we've said this as a great example uh, and his friends who um, you know if you worship this uh, this image you're we're gonna kill you and throw you in the fire what do you have to say about that God God says mm -hmm. don't don't do it don't worship the image. Yep, get thrown right. in the fire. Um, and so their, their perspective was, well, now what? Um, they didn't go back and say, well, because of that, I guess I should worship the image because I'm going to die otherwise, mm -hmm. which is a pretty pretty severe consequence. Right. Uh, right. And they just said, well, now what? And God said, don't worry, I'll take care of you. And they made this statement. Uh, we know that God's going to deliver us. And either we're going home with him Mm -hmm. or he's going to deliver us out of this awful situation, but we believe it. Why? Well, because he's, he's convinced us of the first question, which is, no, don't, don't worship the beast. Right. Uh, go further. Okay. Uh, and that's, that's the beautiful life of God, and we can trust it. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, as we look at that, you and I were in um, uh, John chapter 17, um, and this is Jesus's prayer. Uh, to the Father. So he spent um, John 13, 14, 15, 16 uh, with the disciples in the upper room right before he goes to Gethsemane. And he's summarizing, uh, here's the truth for you to really understand. I'm, I'm leaving. He talks about I'm leaving, mm -hmm. uh, but you're going to be replaced. I'm going to be replaced by the Holy Spirit. You're still going to have me in you and you can still operate the same way. Uh, abide in the vine, uh, mm -hmm. let the Father be the vine dresser. The Holy Spirit is going to guide you into truth. He's going to tell you of things to come. Um, and then he moves into, uh, he changes his, his focus from speaking to the disciples mm -hmm. to now uh, he's ready to basically get up and go to Gethsemane. Uh, and, he's, and now he prays and talks just to the Father, where, of course, mm -hmm. the disciples are listening. Uh, and here's what he's praying. So we talked about uh, John 17, 1 to 5, uh, where he says, uh, the authority has been given to me. Uh, and remember, that means the authority in his kingdom. Right. Uh, because we know that the authority of the world has been given to Satan. So we, that there's, there's two levels of authority. And you know, we know that Christ's authority is superior to that mm -hmm. because it, the world was created by him. Uh, but we as believers are to live in both places. Yep, in the world, which is uh, entropy and destruction and dip, and just the things we mm -hmm. just talked about, you know, just, yeah, yeah. Eh, it's going to be messy. Um, it's going to get more difficult. It's tricky. Uh, yeah, you wish it was different, but that's the way of the world. Uh, but in the kingdom of God, we can be uh, living this beautiful life because his power is, is superior. My authority is superior to that, and I can overcome it. Uh, and then two, as he said, uh, go finish the work that I have planned for you, uh, which is, uh, as, as Christ said, as I did the Father, I finished his work uh, that he gave me, which was, yes, go to the cross, but it was demonstrating the supernatural. It was, mm -hmm. it was training the 12 to hear his voice and to understand his will. Uh, there was lots of elements to what what he finished. Okay, then he goes into uh, the next phase of it where he's talking now specifically about us. Uh, so read verses uh, 6 through 19. Uh, this is uh, John 17, 6, 6 through 19. Okay. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. 
While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself so that they may also be sanctified in truth. Yep. Uh, so um, as you uh, uh, look at that, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's talking about that. Um, um, what did he give us? See, he says, uh, I've given them my word mm -hmm. and they've kept it. Yes. Uh, okay, we've, we've learned something about that, that uh, the word uh, is, is both, you know, in a sense, logos for us. Mm -hmm. Here's truth and start, start with that truth and how does that impact you? And then uh, move it into rhema. Mm -hmm. Well, how does this apply to me uh, right now? Uh, so that, you know, as we did that mini series on the, the vaccine, we learned that, uh, well, there's no absolute about this. So basically, first, uh, go get it settled in your heart, mm -hmm. what I'm speaking to you. Okay, well, that's, that's logos. Go get, right. it, go get it settled. Okay, we have to go the next step. Okay. <laughs> um, how do I do that? And he mm -hmm. says, let me speak rhema to you that applies logos so that you understand it, which means that, by the way, and again, as you look at the simplicity of that, is that let it go get settled for you, which, by the way, mm -hmm. means for the person next to me, they may get it settled in a different way. Right. Because it's not an absolute. Uh, so then I, I would have to go further and say, uh, what's your word to me, Rama, uh, that's applying this logos uh, to me and your promise to me? Uh, and then based upon that, um, I understand it. And my role is to keep it. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, the, the word there is follow it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, go with that. So he says, that's what that's what I've given them, my word. I'm speaking to them. Um, um, and he says, I've given them the words that you gave me to speak to them. Okay, now this is right. cool, this is cool. Um, this whole discussion that he's been having with the disciples is, um, I was able <laughs> to give you a word really easily. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, you're standing next to me. Yes. Um, and the Father's telling me, here's what I want you to say. Speak, remember the words are spirit in their life, and right. then tell, tell them. Uh, and they said, we like that. We really like that. Uh, works really good. Yeah. He said, hey, I'm going away. And they said, hey, what do you mean you're going away? If you go away, <laughs> we're not going to be hearing your words anymore. He said, yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because I'm going to put myself in you through the Holy Spirit. Right. And guess what? The vine dresser is the father. He will speak to the Holy Spirit. And by the way, we read this in uh, Romans 8, 26 to 28. The Spirit's job is to learn God's will and speak it to us. Mm -hmm. um, he said, I'll still, I'll still be speaking words to you, my will to you. And the Father is going to speak to the Holy Spirit, which is us, and is going to spe uh, speak that into you. So you're right. going gonna to keep having this beautiful opportunity for me to keep giving me uh, the words. Uh, and it says your role is to receive it. Um, and believe it. And we, you and I have talked about that. What do you have to say? Give me the power to receive it. Then walk me into believing it. And as a result of believing it, I'll experience it. Right. You know, how, right. how beautiful is that? Uh, it's such a gift that we, yeah. we, we take for granted often, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, so then he says, um, uh, you know, uh, I've kept them. Uh, 
uh, now I'm asking you uh, that, um, Father, that you keep speaking to them that their joy may be fulfilled. Uh, and the world, by the way, uh, is not going to like them much. <laughs> it says he's right. actually going to hate right. them. Uh, uh, and this is everybody that's walking in the flesh, both believers and unbelievers, um, are going to react negatively. Mm -hmm. uh, to uh, what I'm telling you to function with uh, and to go. And, like, and we have the example right after this in Acts, the disciples, were, and they were just out healing people. Right. And just telling and them. people had a problem with, think about that for a minute. They had a problem with them coming in and healing people. Yeah, yeah. It, what a, what, truly, what a ridiculous concept. Yeah, and so you know? <laughs> they're, they're healing and supernatural stuff is going on mm -hmm. and financial stuff is going on and, and a beautiful, uh, wonderful covenant life is being given to right. these people who say, you know, what does God say about this? Well, let me, uh, let me help you heal it because God said, mm -hmm. um, and I received it. I'm speaking that on your behalf and taking that authority. So they experienced it and they're, heal they're just out healing people. And then people are saying, well, how does that work? Well, it's Jesus. Uh, what, what do you mean? Well, Jesus died for you. You know, you need to receive him as your Lord and Savior because we're separated from him because of the requirement for perfe perfection. Mm -hmm. And you can't get there on your own. And doing the law uh, isn't, you know, isn't the answer. Uh, so, uh, by the way, they're starting with the Jewish uh, people who are used to right. religious stuff. Uh, so, and all these people come to know Christ. Well, the Pharisees gather and they say, we got to stop them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're going to take away our system. And we can't allow this. So they literally bring in, interesting enough, Peter and John, uh, mm -hmm. and say, um, we're telling you guys, if you don't stop this, we're going to arrest you. We're going to have you arrested. And you got to stop talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, well, Peter and John just say, uh... It doesn't really it, it doesn't <laughs> really matter what you say because no matter where we are, including in jail, mm -hmm. we're going to share what we know to be true, and you and that's all, that's our call. He says we're going to yeah. follow that call to just speak the words that we're being given and live it out because we're experiencing him speaking. We believe it and we experience mm -hmm. it, and we're going to bear witness to that. Uh, and they said, "Well, stop it," because Jesus said the world's going to hate you. They're right. going to try to shut you down. Okay, now think about the simple reason why. Who's in charge of the world? The enemy. What's his goal? He'll kill and destroy. <laughs> and, and see, stifle, shut down mm -hmm. the work of God that is expanding the kingdom by mm -hmm. inviting people into the kingdom, become a believer, and then once you're there, <laughs> don't walk back out, back into the world, and live like a practical atheist, but stay in the kingdom right. where I'm going to do these wonderful works for you, regardless of what's going on in the world. Even the, even mm -hmm. the tough, difficult world, by the way, of the Roman Empire. Um, if we if you and I went back there now, we would say, man, this is awful. Mm -hmm. uh, look at the look at the lack of freedom they've got. Look at the totalitarian government that they've got. Uh, this is awful. And God says, well, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, I can give you supernatural things uh, in the middle of that. I can heal you. Um, I can give you financial provision. I can do wonderful things. Let me do it. Um, interesting enough, one of the Pharisees, Gamaliel, uh, as they're meeting about this afterwards, because they say, oh, we're, not, we're not doing that. You know, we're, we can't help but do it. And they let him go. And Gamaliel says, look, if it's of God, it's going to go. It's going to mm -hmm. go. If it's not of God, it's gonna it's gonna die out. What do you, what? Why don't we right. just seek God's will about it? You know, don't be so don't be so trying to figure this out yourself. You know, which he actually and trying to control it understood yeah. it. But Jesus said, uh, "Yeah, the world's gonna be a difficult place." Um, uh, and so, and then he says this. This is really cool in verse fifteen. Um, I do not pray that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Have you sent me into the world? I'm sending them into the world uh, that they may be sanctified by the truth. So that, well, what? God's will mm -hmm. uh, is let, let me speak to you. Let me guide you into the truth. 
you'll be sanctified by that. And um, I'm not asking uh, God the Father to take you out of this place. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm hearing that request, by the way, more and more and more. Of right. People who are saying, man, I wish this chaos would stop. Man, I wish this would stop. God, you know, how come this evil stuff is happening mm-hmm. and coming against us? Uh, there must be something wrong. And I said, no, nothing's wrong. I said, you're looking at it incorrectly. That is mm-hmm. that it's going to get worse. You're going to have opposition. And Jesus didn't say, I'm going to take you out of that. Right. He says, interesting enough, I'm sending you into the middle of that. Right. Like, and uh-oh. by the way, I'm <laughs> taking you, I'm holding you by my right hand. Yeah. And I am protecting and leading you through the midst of it to my best and none better in the middle of it all. Yeah. And sanctifying you in the process. That's right. Uh, and it's all about following my will because at my word, at my will is truth. I'm going to lead you into that truth. Uh, what I'm going to do and what I want, what I need you to get to for me to fulfill it. Uh, so that everybody who's experiencing hardship right now, which by the way, <laughs> is everybody. Is everyone. Yes. Um, and it's going to get worse. And you're probably even experiencing as you would view it, personal attack. Mm -hmm. Like, man, these things just, these five things just happened to us. And it usually didn't used to go that many that frequently. Mm -hmm. Um, There must be something wrong. And I hear the people say, have I done something wrong? Mm -hmm. Um, Am I I not fulfilling this? And and I say, "Eh, I think you're asking the wrong question. Uh, That it's going to get worse. And yeah, the frequency of personal impact with things breaking down, uh, you know, uh, issues coming against you, you know, et cetera. I'll just give you, you know, one for, for Linda and I, um, we have, uh, our, we have a well, Mm -hmm. uh, that we, uh, drill, uh, we've drilled and we get water from an, what's called an aquifer. Right. Where water has, has basically gathered. Uh, interesting enough, uh, we discovered and, and found out that our aquifer uh, is what's called a, self, a self-replenisher, self a replenishing aquifer. Most aquifers are closed and there's a finite mon- uh, amount of water in there, which they mm-hmm. drill into and get. Eventually, you know, and it could be decades, but eventually... It's going to run out, right? Because uh, you just use it up, um, and it's not replenishing because it just is there, and it and it uh, basically you got to go find something else. For us, we happen to be on a replenishing aquifer. Mm-hmm. Uh, that means it's constantly being filled up. And and the guy that I talked to, the engineer, when we first learned this, he says you're one of the few in the world that have this replenishing aquifer. You'll never run out of water ever. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's good news. <laughs> so, um, well, what's happened to us recently is that um, uh, we discovered that uh, there's a uh, water authority that um, notified us, and it's mm-hmm. all, all of us in our, in our community, that we're letting you know that we may be coming to drill for water on your property. You know, and, really? and so, you know, my first reaction is no way, you know, absolutely not. You know, that's not going to happen. Uh, so I got to I got to do some investigation. So I get some people to look at it and they say, well, uh, yes, uh, they got a, a judge many, many, many years ago to give them permission to go on private property in your geography and drill for water. Um, and by the way, uh, uh, in our property, they built a reservoir, which interestingly right. enough gave us lakefront property. Well, that's kind of cool. Uh, mm-hmm. And what these what this authority is doing is uh, wants to drill for water, put it in the reservoir, which and they, it's all by calculation. So mm-hmm. and that means downstream, which is what they want. I can take water out of the uh, the creeks and rivers that flow out of the aquifer or out of the uh, reservoir. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's a mathematical, so we got to put it in to take it out. Uh, and so they notified us, well, they could drill on our property. Uh, so <laughs> uh, that's, that's kind of a, a pain in the, the, you know you know what, it's 
wow, this, this could be bad. It's going to, it could ruin my property, ruin my roads. Um, and by the way, uh, where are they going to drill? Because, right. because we, one thing that I did uh, help, help with, actually this is 10, 15 years ago, uh, I joined a group that prevented anybody from drilling into our aquifer. Right. Uh, so a, a judge, you know, gave a, gave a ruling. Your aquifer is protected just for residential wells. Okay. Nobody can dr can drill into that. Um, well, if they drill on my and property, so does this supersede that? No. Uh, so, okay. um, what I what I found out is that they um, they're going to drill uh, deeper than ours mm -hmm. and go to another aquifer below ours. Interesting. Uh, but okay. they go but they go through my aquifer. So, you know, and Linda's. <laughs> She's kind of upset about this, you know, because she's right. she's worried about the, the the land and the aquifer and all that uh, water source. So you know, I'm you know, hey father, what do you got to say about this? You know, and you know, don't get upset. Go get the truth. Go process the truth and protect yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, what I discovered is that yep, they have the right to do it, but they don't have the right to to go to my aquifer. So okay. if if they ever did. By the way, uh, if they ever did, they'd have to restore the land and any roads that they ruined. So that's that's good news. And then two is um, we can have engineers uh, physically out there when they drill mm -hmm. to verify that they don't stop in our aquifer and keep going through right, it. Right, right. Uh, so all I'm trying to illustrate is is that this is one of four or five, six things that over the last couple of weeks was like, oh man, I wasn't expecting These that. Just keep coming, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and how come, how come, how come? Uh, and God, you know, reminded me is I didn't, I didn't take you out of the world. Mm -hmm. I'm sending you into the world, and He says, don't ask the wrong question. Mm -hmm. The wrong question is, God, stop this nonsense. And God says, no, it's under the authority of the enemy who is is piling it up i said right. but but he says ask me what am i going to do about it mm -hmm. i'll give you the answer and i'm going to resolve it and protect you don't worry trust me you can stay in peace right. stay in joy yeah i know it isn't fully resolved yet but i'm going to trust me i'm going to right. resolve it um, and by the way, in the process of it, not only will I resolve it, but if you're asking me the right questions and surrendering, I will use it to sanctify you. Right. That's when you come back into those verses on 17 and 18, you're talking about how his word will sanctify. And sometimes these these problems that come at us are ones that, yes, need a solution, need God to resolve, but also bring up things within our own hearts that he uses that crisis, whereas the enemy meant to do whatever with it, he uses it to sanctify us That's and right. to purify our heart even more and to reveal things to us, which is a beautiful, beautiful gift. Yeah. You know? um, and the, and the uh, you know, in this situation uh, and in these other things that have happened this last week, um, I needed to uh, contact people. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, you know, there's not a, there's not a return phone call. There's, there's not right. a response to that. Uh, and then Linda and I, you know, wait a minute. Uh, God said He's going to lead us to the right people. Mm -hmm. He's going to He's going to resolve this. So we just prayed for the breaking of the delay. Mm. Uh, that that's good. that we would get encouragement uh, that God would open up the doors and literally. And this is really cool. It actually happened over the last couple of days. Uh, after we uh, we realized, wait a minute, ask the right question. Mm -hmm. What do you got to say about this? Um, and then uh, I'll lead you to the right people. Uh, I start the process of searching and I go, don't, I'm not getting any responses. After that, we pray. We say, you know what? We got to pray for the breaking of the enemy holding that back. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did. And within about five, six hours, I got phone calls from everybody. Wow. Uh, and you got led to the right person. Yep. I, I know what I'm doing. I know how to do this. Uh, this is how we do it. That we're going to take this step, this step, this step, and every situation that we were facing, which was kind of overwhelming, mm -hmm. um, it wasn't like, "Well, God, just stop it," or "What's wrong with us?" 
I'm not going to stop it and nothing's wrong with you. Why don't you ask me how I'm going to resolve it? Right. And when you see, you know, the enemy delaying, uh, causing trouble, stand against it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we got to see it because he says here, I am not taking you out of the world. Mm-hmm. Interesting enough, I'm sending you into the world. Right. As I was sent, Jesus uh, said, I'm sending them. Okay, now, let's look at how cool that is. What did Jesus do when he, when he came into the world? Into a wicked, difficult place that he didn't, he didn't say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eliminate all the problems. What did, what did Jesus do? He, he said, let me demonstrate to you Mm-hmm. how you can live in the kingdom of God uh, and, and let me fulfill by doing supernatural things, by mm-hmm. overcoming things, by giving you wisdom, by speaking uh, to you and overcoming the pr- very problems you're experiencing. Right. He says, that's what I've come to do. And we've talked about this. Uh, he says, in John 10, 10, I've come to give you life, give it to you super abundantly. The seven mm-hmm. exceptional things back. What does he say? I'm going to heal the brokenhearted. I'm going to get you out of prison. I'm going to take sadness and, and replace it with joy. I'm going to take heaviness and give you uh, uh, great enthusiasm. I'm going to rebuild the things that are lost. Um, that's what I've come to do. And that's mm-hmm. how, that's what I was sent to do. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, by the way, now this is cool. Why? Well, so that I can expand the kingdom and have more and more people join me in my work because now it's not limited to me. I can have all of you be doing the same thing. Why? Because I'm living within you. So guess what? Um, I'm sending you into this difficult spot. So Rich, yeah, okay, you got got a tough week. Mm Mm-hmm. what think about why I'm sending you into this so that you experience my supernatural work, mm-hmm. you bear witness to it, you hear it, you believe it, you experience it, you'll bear witness to it, and guess what? Other people are going to say, Is that possible for me? Right. And, I, and my answer is going to be, Yeah, come and join the kingdom, learn to abide, get connected, and seek God's will, and you'll experience it too. Yeah, but the circumstances are awful. Yeah, but. I said, doesn't matter. Right. Um, I'm experiencing that too. I'm, I'm being sent just like, like he was sent. So some of what you're talking about reminds me, we got into just a really interesting conversation with um, a very, very young believer um, today and in, in our ladies group who, who visited our group. And really we got in this conversation and she was just very authentic, you know, after the ladies that I'm with, are are amazing i like i wish everybody had friends like these ladies yeah. they're just amazing in their ability to just bring things back to god's feet and to his truth and and really seek it and so she's bearing witness to all of this and there is in the midst of it a lot of of difficulty that is being brought up yet the hope and the i'm seeking god's truth and you know what we're going to go to god's truth together for you on this and you know all of this is being talked about and and she did you know very honestly she's like thank you for letting me just stand and be witness to this yeah. but so here's the but and this is a common but so that's why i want to bring it up she's like i've got to be honest with you I don't, I, I dig into everything. I'm somebody who loves to dig into everything. I can't get myself to dig into God's word. Ah. There's a wall there. And I think the reason is some of what I'm hearing from you right now. It's, I know enough to know that if I am, you know, if I am all in, then there's going to be attacks from the the enemy and life is going to be even harder. And so we had this really good, authentic conversation about, you know, there is a reality here that, you know, when you talk about John 10, 10, you know, that um, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, yeah. but I've come that you may have life abundantly. Yeah. And so we were able to really talk through, you know, there is a reality here. You're going through life. The enemy doesn't look and say, oh, that one is mine. That one's mine. I'm not going to bother him. Right. <laughs> the enemy's nature is still kill and destroy. For everybody, so you're yeah. either going through life of difficulties and hardship and chaos in an evil world, unprotected, or you're going in with Jesus and having the Holy Spirit to guide you, to take you by the hand and walk you through the midst of it into abundant life. Which one do you want? Yeah. And there's, yeah. there's a question of surrender there, though, because I think there is this 
this falseness that um, that people have bought into that. Well, if I if I go all in, my life is simply just going to be that hard. Right. And I don't want the spiritual attack. It's easier on this side. I'm hearing you guys go through the tough stuff, and I just don't want to do the tough stuff. <laughs> Instead of realizing going through the tough stuff hand in hand with the Savior is abundant life and adventure and fun and joy and supernatural and seeing him show off and seeing him refine and all of these things. Yeah, yeah. And um, so it was really an interesting conversation, but it ties back to a lot of what you're talking about right now as well. Yeah, yeah. And and remember that the uh, the experience uh, is yeah you have these uh, interesting things happen to you, but uh, both uh, the resolution and I'm going to bring you the covenant. I'm going to I am going to bless you to make you a blessing. Right. Uh, you're going to avoid a lot of hardship that you don't need to step into. Exactly. Um, and while you have trouble in the world, which you will, um, you'll you'll start to realize, like Linda and I did this week, is okay. Yeah, these are unpleasant things, and I mm -hmm. wish I didn't have to deal with this. Right. Uh, but I don't. I don't counterdict the fact that well, the world's evil. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have trouble there. You know, the enemy's trying to come against you uh, using self-centered people to fulfill their thing, which is going to encroach upon you. But uh, Rich and Linda, you know that I'll resolve it. Mm -hmm. That alone, see, keeps you in the peace. Right. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Well, how are you going to do, how are you going to do this? Okay. Let me guide you into that and see the, the this is the beauty of the relationship is we look at, I'll feel better when it's all resolved. Mm -hmm. And God says, well, why don't you feel better right now? Because I'm going to resolve it. And you and I get to spend time doing it. Right. Um, how fun is this? Uh, and right. enjoy the step-by-step -step revelation and God breaking you know, the delay and getting us led to the right people who say, yeah, I know exactly what to do here. And here's, how, here's what we're going to do to help protect you. And, and it's like, hallelujah. Now, is it resolved yet? No, it's going to be resolved. Right. Um, and when it came up, I'm still in the covenant. I'm still blessed to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. And and I can tell you from experience, I'd rather way be there than facing Absolutely. all this stuff myself and constant, constantly in turmoil mm -hmm. because I'm not sure what's going to happen. So as we finish uh, today, uh, we'll continue on with Jesus' prayer. But, uh, you know, again, the, the key is, that he says, um, I'm going to keep speaking my word to you. Uh, it's going to sanctify you and lead you to resolution. Uh, and I'm sending you actually into this difficult place to experience this. Um, and so it's an interesting understanding. He said the key to the whole thing, by the way, you got to follow my will. <laughs> and by the way, I'll get it to you. Uh, right. So... Uh, we'll keep we'll keep remembering that. So again, if you yeah. have questions, you know, send it off to us. Uh, uh, questions at afjministry.com or on the on the YouTube, and uh, we'll pick this up again tomorrow as we uh, uh, work look further at Jesus's prayer. Great. I want to point out one quick thing before we jump off, just because you did talk about your aquifer and how cool it is that it ha has a never-ending source, unlike yes. most other aquifers. The the so symbolism is not lost for those of you who don't realize that. Um, Rich and Linda's place is called Living Waters. That's retreat. right. That's right. Living Waters. And that is his promise to us. Those living waters do not run dry. That's right. At any point in time. And so what a cool thing just to picture and to hold out hope on. Yeah. And by the way, you, uh, one other thing about that, Kathy, is that uh, we have to have it tested every year. Uh, mm -hmm. Our water is the purest water on earth. I love it's, it. It's more pure than what you can go and buy in a store that's been sanitized. Mm -hmm. and, and we get to drink it out of our tap. That's beautiful. And that's, there is, there's so much symbolism there to have yeah. fun with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so much symbolism. But if you found today encouraging, um, please be a friend and tell a friend, share the podcast with others, because you know what? Rich and Linda are not the only ones that get to go and feed at the living waters that do not run dry. Amen to that, that. is there for every one of us. And we are excited you're on this journey with us. Yep. Amen. We'll see you, see you tomorrow. All right. Have a great day. Yep. You too. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. 
Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.